Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Awkward Guests by Mega Corpin Games. It plays one to eight players, takes roughly 45 minutes to about an hour and a half for ages 13 and up. And in the game Awkward Quests, <laughs> poor Mr. Walton has passed away in his study, and the guests in his home are all acting very suspicious. And it is your job to determine who the culprit is. This game plays similar to the classic Clue, but with a huge huge twist, a huge amount of strategy, it changes the game up quite a bit. There no longer is a board, and in fact it's all about utilizing your player screen to find out everything you need to know. You'll need to know who did it, what was their motive, what uh, areas in the house did they start in, move through, where they picked up the weapon, and how they got to the study. You'll also have to figure out what weapon it was, and whether or not there was an accomplice aiding and abetting in the murder. And if you can solve all of these things before the other players, you will win the game. Players will have clues or hints that they'll be able to trade back and forth, trying to learn and decide which of pieces are more relevant than others, whether or not somebody is lying, and how exactly did the murder get committed. Find out who the murderer was and succeed, or be out of the game and wait and hopefully somebody else will be able to solve the mystery. Multiple different styles of play, with multiple different difficulty levels making the game challenging and also not too complex, depending on your level of difficulty and variation of play in the game Awkward Guests. Let's go ahead and take a look. To set up a game of Awkward Guests, each player is going to get a player screen and they're going to get a piece of paper that's got a front and a back that they'll be utilizing to write on and try and decipher where the murderer uh, did his dirty deed, how it was committed and all that good stuff. You'll hide that screen, uh, or hide that paper with the screen in order to make sure that nobody else sees your deductions. Each player is also going to get six cards from a preset up deck. Basically there's a ton of different variations and variables to change the story and who the murderer was in the box. You've got tons and tons and tons of these wonderful cards. And you'll make a 70 card deck uh, with the numbers printed on them. So it'll be like, put the number one in the deck and the number four and seven and 22 and 54 and 180. And uh, you'll basically then shuffle those cards up and that's how you get your six cards. You're also going to get a player marker that's gonna have a light and a dark side. You're going to get value numbers as well that have fronts and backs, which will dictate how much value you're going to be giving and trading with your cards. There's also a rule book which functions for two things. One, it tells you how to play the game, but you won't need that because I'm explaining it to you. And the other side is going to help you deduce what information you will need. There's going to be suspects and locations, and all the cards are categorized with suspects and locations on them to give you information. Go ahead and set the confidential discard pile up along with the confidential card, which will basically keep the cards that you discard hidden. And if you need, if you're playing with a lot of players, you can also take these additional player cards or the uh, NPC cards, the villains or suspects, and set them aside so players will be able to reach them if this is not available for them. And of course, the last thing is you're going to give one player the starting player token. Poor Mr. Walton is going to be uh, who determines to be the starting player. And then you'll have these wonderful little uh, arrow markers, which will indicate uh, who you want information from and in what location you want that information to be given to you. After that, you're pretty much set up and you're ready to go and play the game Awkward Guess. Okay, so setup's done, and I have Mr. Walton, which means I'm going to go ahead and take the first turn of the game. And the game works in turns and, of course, rounds. After each player has taken a turn, the round will end, you'll do two unique phases, and then this Mr. Walton will pass counterclockwise and you'll continue playing until somebody's able to solve the case. You'll need all the information perfectly in order to successfully win the game, so be careful making solutions. On your turn, you will do the inquiry, the offer, and the exchange. The inquiry is pretty simple. You will take on your turn the two different uh, markers, these little arrows, and you'll point to any of any number of the characters and the locations. You can choose two characters, two locations, or one of each. After that happens, then each player is going to go ahead and offer you cards. They'll look in their hand, they will select cards with the same categories, and the categories are on the top right hand side, and the value is on the top left, and they will put those cards down. So for instance, if I asked for the bedroom in C, and maybe Susie had a, a bedroom and a C card, or two Cs or two bedrooms, they'll put these cards down. And then based on the value of these cards, so for instance, we have a two here, and we have a one here, they will put down a value marker representing the cumulative value 
value of all the cards. This is the value of all the cards I'm giving you, and these cards relate to what you're asking for. And I would have each player do that in counterclockwise order. After every single player has given me an offer, then I will have the option to go ahead and uh, exchange the cards in my hand for theirs. Now I have to give them at least the same value or more. So for instance, if this was a value of three, I could give them one three card, I could give them three ones or two and a one. So I would say, okay, Susie, I'm gonna give you this card here and this is gonna go away and these are going to go into my hand, giving me more information. And then they are going to take my card and they will gain that information. I could choose uh, to exchange as many cards as I want with as many players as long as I follow the rules if I have to give them the equal amount and uh, or more and uh, then after I do that I can write down on my mat and so can they all the information that I have gleaned. Now when you're playing cards and giving cards and trading cards the values matter. Three is going to be more important and better information than a one. One might give you a small like tidbit of information. It could also be kind of like hearsay or like slight useful information that you'll have to deduce. And then twos are pretty much somewhere in the middle. You'll be using these to mark off things on your board to help deduce what happened, who did it, and what locations they had to travel to get into the study with the weapon of their choice. After I have done that, then I'm going to go ahead and pass. And then the next player is going to get a chance to do the same thing. They're going to do their inquiry, they're going to have an offer, and then exchange cards. Rinse and repeat. When it's not my turn, I'm going to be taking time to mark down on my board, and I'm also going to be taking time to offer up cards uh, if I have the cards required based on what they're asking for, and hopefully getting new information. Eventually, everybody will take their turn, and then you'll move on to the end of round. The end of round only has two phases. The first one is a solution phase. Each player is going to take the white and uh, black or dark token, and then they're going to select which side they would like to reveal. If they reveal the white, that means that they are looking to solve the equation, which means you're basically giving up your opportunity to play anymore because you completely know what happened. The other option is the dark side, which means you're just going to simply pass. If you pass, no big deal, you move on to, well, everybody who does that will move on to the next phase, provided nobody wins. However, if somebody chooses the light, they are then going to utilize their sheet of paper, they're going to utilize the booklet, and they're going to look and see if they got all of the answers correctly. If they do not get all the answers correctly, they are out of the game, they will reveal all of their cards, and then they will go ahead and, I don't know, go watch a movie or, or do something else. It probably is not gonna be that long after they are losing, but yeah, they're, they're eliminated from the game. Uh, and of course, if they get it right, they win. The game instantly is over, you reveal your solution to show that you, they can check your work, and you reveal the solution for the game. If nobody decides to make a solution, of course, especially after the first couple rounds, then you're going to move on to the next phase of the game, which is the discard phase. Everybody is going to discard cards down to three. So if you have six cards in hand, you will choose three cards you don't want, and you will put them into the discard pile, putting the confidential token on top, indicating that that pile is the discard pile. And everybody is going to do that. I don't want these three cards, I don't want these three cards, I don't want these four cards, until you get just a hand size of three. Then after that, you're going to pass the first player marker to the player going in counterclockwise direction, that player is then going to take the pile of cards from the deck and deal out cards until a player gets to six cards for each player. So everybody gets an additional, additional cards until they reach a hand size of six, which will be three. And then it's going to rinse and repeat. That player is going to do the inquiry, the offer, the exchange, the next player will do it, the next player will do it, the next player, up until the point the round ends, in which case everybody has the opportunity to try and solve the puzzle. And then if nobody wants to, they will discard down to three cards, then get up to six cards, and then you'll be passing this marker over to the next player. And that's basically the idea of the game. It's rather simple. It's about, it's a whodunit game, but what really gets into it is the uniqueness as to what your board looks like, which I haven't explained and I will now. Look at that movie magic. <laughs> the first thing I have here is a piece of paper you'll be utilizing. Now on the top section of the paper here is going to be the different characters. These are all the suspects. And then you're going to have their motives and then uh, suspicions that other guests might have. 
If you can mark off all three of the little spaces next to a motive, then that means that that person did it and that was their motive. However, if you make a little, if you make one of the big check marks, that means that one of their three motives was incorrect. If you mark off all three motives as being potential, then it is not that person. So the only way you're going to be able to solve out who did it is by either marking off everybody's motive except for one person, or by getting three specific pieces of information on a motive and them all being checked off. So for instance, if it was Greg Gaffney and I marked off A, B, and one of these little magnifying glasses, it would be him and the motive would be a stolen recipe. Then over down here in the middle, this is the location of the incident. There's the study, which is where uh, our sad Mr. Milton was murdered. And then there's every other room in the house and directions that you can take uh, that have little arrows. You will need to know A, where your guests or where the guests, the suspects started, and in what locations they had to travel to to get to the study. And they also have to be able to travel through those locations and the location of the weapon be in that area. So for instance, if it was the shovel or pesticide or perhaps the rope and your character started in the vestibule, then that means they would have to take a route that would lead them through the shed from the vestibule to the study. And you have to also make sure that because there's certain flight locations that are marked off, it kind of gives you a route as you go through the game with the cards. All the cards give you pieces of information that tell you how many guests are in which room, which rooms were blocked off that night, or the doors were locked. And also, you have the last thing, which is the weapons here. There are different types of weapons. Uh, there are also different um, in pieces of information, like these signs here. You'll get cards that say certain signs are not available. Like, for instance, maybe there was, an, there was no oily substance on the weapon. So you would go ahead and mark off every single space that had that symbol on it. Or perhaps there was no defensive wounds. And if that was the case, you would mark off all these little shields up until you find just this singular weapon that remains. In which case, you would have the weapon, the route, the person and the motive. And if you can solve all of that with the cards that you're going to be given throughout the game, that is the time in which you're going to use this. If you think somebody is ahead of you, then you may want to try and guess sooner, even if you don't have all the information, because you can kind of gleam and kind of make an assumption based on certain things throughout the game that might push you ahead. Um, or you might want to chance it just because it might be too late for you to solve it if you think somebody is close enough. And that's pretty much the game, Awkward Guests. When I first played this game, it made absolutely no sense to me at all. Even when it was explained to me, it was way too complex. And I hope I did a good job of trying to explain it to you because it took me a couple rounds to figure it out. And if you watch this video before purchasing the game and reading the rules, I think it would probably give you a good understanding. I think I explained things fairly well, and hopefully at least you'll understand the phases of the turn in which you're going to be doing the inquiry and then the offer and the exchange. It's really simple as of what it is. You're just asking for cards, they give you a value, and you give them the same value or more, and and then you write the stuff down that you get on your player board. And after that, you're going to be basically solving or not, and then discarding, getting new cards. Um, there's some other interesting things in the game that happen if this deck runs out into, all, into the discard pile. When you reshuffle it, you'll deal out three cards that will be face up for all players to try and push the game a little bit faster because some people might be trying to withhold information. Other things that might happen in the game is players are going to keep cards in their hand the entire time to prevent you from gaining as much information as they can and keeping their information be extremely valuable to them, but it might push them away from being able to solve the puzzle as well. Players can guess, players can be perfectly sure it's really up to you as how you want to play the game. Additionally, too, there's a bunch of unique information on the back of your screen here. This screen is going to have uh, a bunch of tips and tricks and how you're going to be able to solve things and what all the cards mean and how they work. And realistically, there are a ton of different cards and what they do. Sometimes the card will say something like, um, stolen recipe. This person knows that uh, this was a potential part of the motive, right? And you'll mark that down. And if you have all three, uh, all two of the other ones for this one, then you'll know it's this person with the specific motive. It's a decently useful piece of information for two. Or maybe for one, you're going to glean that uh, Stanley Smith claims that he was in the library at the time of the murder. So that's kind of useful, provided Stanley's not the murderer and he's telling the truth. Or even if he is, it might give you that information. You might know. Um, uh, then that's only worth one, right? Uh, maybe uh, somebody has a family vendetta. Uh, maybe uh, you know that there are two people in the billiard room because people who don't lie are always going to be people like the uh, housekeepers or the butlers. These people are always going to tell you the truth. It's the other people, the suspects, that you have to be concerned about. It's a lot of intrigue. And uh, for the most part, 
after a couple rounds, it started to make sense and everything started to come together. And I started to understand how the board functioned, what was important and what was not important in the game, and what questions to ask for what different pieces of information, which is all about the game, trying to solve and trying to figure things out. This comes with a ton of cards. It comes with a ton of content and a ton of different scenarios. All the pieces are high quality. There's enough players to play up to eight, which is excellent, with a ton of different variables, whether you want to play easy mode or medium or hard, which includes additional aspects to the game, which would be something like the accomplice. You'll have to figure out who the accomplice was and why they were the accomplice, which is a nice little bit of information as well. And it's all put into place by the cards. They tell you what cards to put into the deck, which gives you a unique uh, something that happens. And there's a story attached to each of these scenarios as well. Uh, you'll know, for instance, that the poison, uh, the, if you have the poison chalice motive, then you probably know that the weapon was most likely poisoned. Uh, and of course there are poison in here, but there's still multiple different ways in which you could be poisoned. So then you have a little bit more of a gleam as to what happened and what weapon was used. And then you can kind of mark off other weapons with that information, even though you didn't need the other cards. You'll get information from routes, from people. You'll kind of take guesses. It has a whole bunch of stuff included with the game. So yes, tons of cards, tons of content, tons of replayability, and great quality. The artwork is excellent as well. This game has gotten a ton of different awards, and uh, for good reason. This was something that I brought out with two players who are not really uh, intense modern gamers. One of them had never played a board game before, other than maybe like Monopoly once when they were a kid and they got into this and they loved it. They asked to play it again the next night, even though this game is quite long. So yes, we really enjoyed this game. Let's jump into pros and cons. Pros. This is basically Clue on steroids. It removes all the bad things about Clue, which is the roll to moves and uh, not getting where you want to be at a certain time. It gives you more information, more choices, and more ability to risk certain things and gleam information with unique twists and turns involving the maids giving you information and the suspects themselves. Yes. Additionally, another pro to this game is the quality of the components. It has beautiful quality, great style. It feels like an old classic game, but it's completely modernized, which makes it wonderful. And then, of course, the story to the game. The story provides a ton of different uh, scenarios in which you can play through. You kind of make up the story as you go along and you have this idea in your head and somebody else has their own unique idea as well. And it feels more realistic than other deduction games when it comes to like what actually happened and why they went a certain way and why you might not be able to trust one person over another. And all you're utilizing is just a deck of cards. 70 cards is all you need in order to play this full and engrossing game which they did an excellent job with. And then of course, finally, this game is challenging. It's got a ton of challenge in it, and you're going to be attempting to do your best to understand what exactly is happening as cards are being passed, passed around, and what you need to do in order to write certain things down. If you make a mistake, you're in trouble, you have to be very careful. It has a bunch of different things that you can do to elevate the uh, complexity of the game and the intensity, and that provides a ton of replayability and fun. Everybody I knew at the table who played this game wanted to play again. I wasn't ready though, because it was a very long game, because our first game took the longest to learn how to play, but I was willing to play it again the day after, and once again, everyone had fun, and the scenario was completely different. Cons of this game. If you jump into this game without understanding the rules and without learning things and kind of playing as you go, the cards won't make sense. You're going to try and have to piece together, oh, what happens if I don't, if I mark two of these boxes or three of these boxes, or if I mark these two boxes? And if you don't know what you need to do specifically and how to glean the motive and whatnot, you're going to have trouble with this game. If you don't know that you need to know where the person was to start, what route they took, and the route had to be with the weapon, and you have to get to the study, and you have to be able to showcase that in the solution and lose the game like I did the first game. I knew everything, but I didn't know that they needed to start in a location. So you have to be able to know all that information and it just comes down to uh, being better prepared and knowing what you need to know before starting the game. Another thing to note too, another negative is you might get the same cards over and over again. Players might keep passing you things. You might need something on suspect M. You really need something, it's just one thing, but they keep giving you card number two, card number two. You keep getting rid of it and it keeps coming back to you. You're going to get cards you don't want quite a bit, especially as the game progresses. 
And it might just be that one piece of information that you need and it might not come to you and you might not want to take a guess. And so somebody's already gathered all the information they need because you were a little more forthcoming and then they'll win the game. And that can happen in a game like this. It's all about withholding information and utilizing what you have, which can also push the game to a longer length. The game can go longer than the box says. That is a fact. It can be quite a bit, especially if players are holding cards. Yes, there is a way the game speeds things up by the deck discarding itself and basically uh, revealing more information over a period of time. But still, to get through those cards, especially if you're not playing with the max number of players, it can start to way a little heavier. Now with more players comes more information that can be gleaned and players are going to have more value in their hands they may, run, may not want to hold and I always suggest with this game to play with more players because that is where the fun really begins. Yes it plays fine at two, at three, at four. I didn't play it at one. I barely play games at one especially if they have up to eight um, but the more players you can put in together the better. This is an all out better a game of Clue. It's an all out better deduction game. It's probably one of the best deduction games I have played that involve finding specific pieces of information and uh, trying to solve the case because there's so much going on but it's not complex to understand how the game the turn takes place and the rounds take place and how to win the game. Overall this is an excellent game. I really, really, really had a ton of fun with Awkward Guests. I highly, highly suggest you take a look at this game. This was uh, suggested to play from me, from Brian, and Brian ended up asking them to give me a review copy to try it out. And I was skeptical because I'm not a huge fan of Clue and Deduction games, but playing this game, I didn't take my eyes off of it. Even though it was a longer game, our first game, and our second game was fairly long as well, I was still engrossed in finding those missing pieces of information and trying to beat out my other investigators to solve the poor case of Mr. Milton. I really wanted to uh, make sure that he's, he, he got his, just, his justice, and uh, I, I never could. But even losing, I still had a fun time playing this game. If you like deduction games, if you enjoy trying to solve a puzzle, if you like information gathering and giving, then Awkward Guests is a must-get. This receives my seal of approval, which is honestly more important than the Dice Tower seal of excellence, so I strongly suggest you take a look at the game. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Awkward Guests. If you're interested in the pick of the game, there's a link down below in the description. If there's an affiliated link, that's because I could find one. If there's not, there's not. I get 5%. Um, uh, disclosure, they sent me this game to play and review for you. There you go. Also, if you'd like, you check out the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. You can also go ahead and check out our live streams every Sunday, 6.30 p.m. PST. We play games just like this one. In fact, we might play this game uh, eventually here because people really, really did enjoy it. You can also check out our Patreon for a dollar a month to support us. It goes a long way to helping us make more content, helping us produce our live streams, giving us a better Discord server, etc., etc. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to solving the case of poor Mr. Milton with you next time.